Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Octavia Prosper. In the headlines, Tourism Minister Charles updates on Dominica's tourism sector and Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce endorses COVID-19 vaccination program in Dominica. Details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. The Dominica Meteorological Service is monitoring a strong tropical wave located in the eastern Atlantic which has a high chance of development within the next two to five days. Marshall Alexander is the Acting Senior Met Officer at the Dominica Meteorological Service. Mr. Alexander encouraged citizens to monitor the progress of this system. Environmental conditions are expected to remain favorable for development and a tropical depression is likely to form within the next couple of days. This system is expected to move westward to west-northwestward across the tropical Atlantic during the next several days and is expected to approach the area by early next week. We are therefore advising the public to monitor the progress of this system. Remember, we are in the hurricane season. As Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean begins to get back to business, Minister for Tourism, International Transport and Maritime Initiatives, Honorable Dennis Charles, says Dominica has launched several new initiatives to restore tourism on the island. Initiatives such as Work in Nature, Bucket List and Safe in Nature have been the boys by which Dominica's tourism sector has strived despite the pandemic. Dominica, like the rest of the world, has been racing to slow the spread of the disease by testing and treating patients, carrying out contact tracing, limiting travel, quarantining citizens, and cancelling large gatherings such as sporting events, concerts, and schools. Addressing a Caribbean Tourism Organization press conference today, Minister Charles says, to date, about 50% of Dominica's adult population has been fully or partially vaccinated against the virus through the Ministry of Health's aggressive vaccination campaign. As we say in Dominica, nature awaits families, friends, honeymooners, and adventure seekers. 
especially those who want to avoid crowds. Because of Dominica fast land space, one can have their own personal space in our natural haven. Like everywhere else, we too have been actively managing the pandemic to minimize its negative effect on our citizens and visitors alike. We've developed and are continually reviewing our protocols as health and safety of all is our top priority. To date, about 50% of the target population has received one or more vaccines. And the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment has ramped up its vaccination campaign to increase our vaccination numbers. We expect to roll out the Pfizer vaccination next week. Dominica has managed the spread of the virus well thus far by earning several accolades inclusive of the safe travel seal by the World Travel Tourism Council. The tourism minister states, travelers to Dominica can rest assured of the island's highest regard for health and safety. Our effective management of the pandemic and the safe in nature managed experience Earn Dominica the accolade inclusive of safe travel seal by the World Travel Tourism Council. So travelers to Dominica can rest assured of our highest regard for their health and safety while ensuring they enjoy the nature, culture and adventure of Dominica. We are also on the UK green list for quarantine free travel upon returning to the United Kingdom. Further, to keep travelers updated, with health protocols, we established the Tourism Customer Service Concierge Unit. Services offered by the unit includes responses to general inquiries, providing information on current health protocols, and safety entry requirements, and also facilitating appointments for COVID-19 testing. Travel to Dominica has been made easy as the island has finally established direct flights from U.S. mainland to the Nature Isle. The minister added Dominica is currently exploring new avenues for travel to the island. Visitors desirous of traveling to Dominica for business, romantic getaways, family vacations, adventure, diving, wellness, and cultural experience. We await you and I must say that we now have more flight options and connectivity to get there. A major, major milestone for us this year was finally establishing direct flights from U.S. mainland. As of December 8th, American Airlines will have direct flight service between Miami and Dominica. The non-stop service will operate twice weekly on Wednesdays and Saturdays. The aircraft will be an Embraer jet with business class, premium economy, and economy seating. As the ongoing pandemic brought cruise travel to a halt, Dominica's efforts to reopen the cruise season faced its challenges. However, Dominica resumed cruise activities on July 27, 2021, after taking on a regional approach. This cruise season, Dominica expects over 200 cruise calls through the end of July 2022. 13 cruise ships are expected to make their inaugural calls to the island during the 2021-2022 cruise season. Caribbean Airlines also offers direct flight to Dominica from Trinidad. So travelers have additional options when planning their trip to Nature's Island. We are also exploring new hubs such as Punta Cana from Dominican Republic, in Dominican Republic, and more efficient routes with our existing airline partners, in particularly Inter-Caribbean Airways. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt says Dominica stands ready to receive the Pfizer vaccine promised by the United States government. Earlier this year, the United States guaranteed 46,500 Pfizer vaccine doses would be donated to the island by year's end. Prime Minister Skerritt noted Dominica has put in place all the necessary measures required for the storage and rollout of the Pfizer vaccine. On the issue of the Pfizer vaccines, which is a donation from the U.S. government, and we're very grateful to President Biden and his administration and the American people for this most generous gift. We will receive some 46,500 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, everything is in place uh, for the rollout of the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, in Dominica, the freezer, which, which was needed to be here uh, at least 48 hours before the vaccines arrived, um, arrived there and it's, it's been tested and it's, it's functioning and working very well. Um, the, the, the staff is in place 
um, and the schedule has been drawn up uh, to roll out the, the, the vaccines, the Pfizer vaccines, when they come into the country. Currently, the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine is authorized for use in children ages 12 and upward. As such, Prime Minister Skerritt encouraged parents to make their children available to take the vaccine in order to protect them from the virus. We are very grateful, I said, to the United States government, and so we're hoping to get this very soon. The important thing about the Pfizer vaccine is that it can be administered to children 12 to 17 years old. And it's important that parents and guardians, you know, um, consent for the children to get vaccinated. Um, and of course, it's available to everybody from 12 up. Um, we have enough vaccines to vaccinate the, the, the population. Uh, we still do have the Sinopharm and we still do have AstraZeneca. And with the Pfizer coming on board, we will have a greater option to, to choose from. He emphasized the importance of the vaccine and called on Dominicans to avoid waiting until it is too late to take the vaccine. What I would like to caution people, because I've, I've met people who've said, you know, I, I'm waiting for the Pfizer or waiting for the, for the Cuban vaccine. You know, um, we would, I would caution you against waiting. You know, I believe that all of the vaccines which we have so far, um, the efficacy rate is high. Um, and it's important that we get vaccinated as quickly as possible. So I do not have a timetable on, on when we will get the Cuban, the Abdala from Cuba. Um, but I would, I would um, suggest to you that you, or not anybody who is listening who hasn't been vaccinated, to, to, to take what is available. I mean, they, they all work um, and they all will work. So we, we, we do not want to wait until it's too late. The Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, DAIC, has endorsed the national vaccination strategy as the foundation of Dominica's socio-economic recovery from the impacts of COVID-19. Government through the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment has propelled a vaccination drive, the major defense against the COVID-19 virus. The vaccination drive commenced on February 22, 2021, and since then has been available at no charge to the public. President of DAIC, Mr. Stephen Lander, is in full support of government initiatives in Dominica's vaccination drive. He says vaccination is critical in this fight. We are quite supportive of the efforts by the government and health officials to increase the rate of vaccination locally and help stop the rate of transmission and importantly you know reduce the likelihood of severe illness and hospitalization one of the things that we're mindful of is that the capacity of our health system is limited and we're probably not going to manage well if we have a spike in demand on the health resources and we're also concerned about what that means for persons who have pre-existing our conditions and routinely access these health services, right? What, what we really don't want to see is a situation where um, the system is so clogged that we have to exclude uh, the provision of services to any one individual. Um, we, we simply cannot afford that as a nation. Mr. Lander says persons should also consider the economic perspective during this crisis. The stops and starts that we've had to endure over the last year or so have been very disruptive. It, it's disrupted businesses. Some businesses have been forced to close. Uh, it's forced business owners to make hard decisions about reducing employees and, and controlling costs. Uh, in some cases, we've had you know, instances where people have had to go with reduced income. Uh, I don't have to explain the impact on families and their livelihoods as a result of that. So there are a couple of things here to consider. The DAIC president says though vaccination is proven to be effective, the opinion and rights of others are well respected. This is at the core a community issue and, and I think it's, it's very important for us to understand that whatever individual decision that we make really impacts on the entire community. So as we consider the choices uh, before us, we want everybody to be mindful of those implications. 
Medical research states that vaccine strengthens our immune system by training it to recognize and fight against the virus, thereby reducing the probability of severe illness and death. Extensive vaccination may also foster population immunity, making it more difficult for the virus to spread from person to person. The DAIC has affirmed the commitment to the business community in raising literacy and addressing the issue of vaccination hesitancy. Hesitancy comes from different sources. Some people are, are very much in the know and are not comfortable with the circumstances around how the vaccines were developed. Uh, you may have religious influences and so on. Uh, what we try to do is share information. So where there are any concerns, we try to share the, the factual information around that so we can help relay those concerns, if not dispel them. All right, so, so a lot of our efforts has been focused on trying to figure out from the business perspective what might be driving the hesitancy and then what we can do to provide information around those concerns. Um, as we speak, we're doing a, a survey in conjunction with the Discover Dominica Authority and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association that is meant to do exactly that. Uh, so we've gone out to businesses locally and, and asked for their employees to complete surveys so we can get a better understanding as to what concerns they have that may be, may be preventing them, sorry, from getting vaccinated. And then developing information uh, for distribution that, that addresses those concerns. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment last week introduced an initiative called the Business Vaccination Drive. Mr. Lander is satisfied with the efforts of providing effective access to vaccination by business establishments. It's, it's brilliant um, because a lot of people, I, I guess, would have shared stories with you about how long they waited, you know, having to go to the various sites to get vaccinated. Obviously, that has an impact on the business, and we want to minimize those impacts as much as possible, right? So the fact that the health officials will actually come on site, uh, perform the vaccination, day, it, it, it's a huge win, right? And, and we encourage all the businesses locally to take advantage of that. Mr. Lander says the new initiatives undertaken by the Ministry of Health shows their prudent efforts in curbing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. He says these efforts must be appreciated. The government has been doing a very good job in terms of you know, innovating along the way. Uh, this is a very dynamic situation and, and it takes a degree of agility and, and being able to pivot and turn and respond to things as they develop. So as, as people raise concern, the public raise concerns about for example, the testing process and all that can be improved, it's important for the government to be reactive, be responsive, and provide solutions to the concerns being raised. The Ministry of Health continues to encourage citizens to get vaccinated. Protect yourself and your loved ones. Know your status. Get tested in order to regain a sense of normalcy. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. This is CARICOM Secretary General Irwin LaRock. I took the jab, a COVID-19 vaccine. I'm encouraging you, my brothers and sisters, to join me. Take the jab and observe the protocols. We're saving lives and jobs. Welcome back. 
The government of Dominica, through the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment, is encouraging the public to get vaccinated. The ministry continues its vaccination drive and makes vaccines available at several health and wellness facilities across the island. Currently, the Ministry of Health is offering two types of vaccines, the AstraZeneca and the Sinopharm vaccine, which should be taken in two doses. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has stated the Pfizer vaccine will also be made available to citizens and children from the age of 12 to 17. Dr. Kivian Burnett is the national coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Unit. A number of COVID vaccines are available in our country right now, namely Sinopharm, AstraZeneca, and soon to arrive Pfizer. These vaccines are used in achieving immunity among the Dominican public. As we are all aware, vaccination is one of the best ways to decrease the transmission and spread of such a dreadful disease. As a result, the COVID as a result, the COVID-19 vaccination program continues to make vaccines available to everyone residing in the Commonwealth of Dominica free of charge. As at September 14, for approximately 23,222 individuals have been partially vaccinated, while 20,626 has been fully vaccinated. Dr. Burnett says if these numbers increase, this will bring Dominica one step forward to achieve herd immunity. With daily increases of vaccination, this aids in achieving the objective of herd immunity for our beloved country. Some may have a lingering question. What is herd immunity? Well, herd immunity, also known as population immunity, is the indirect protection from an infectious disease that happens when a population is either immune via vaccination, that either happens when a population is immune via va through vaccinations or immunity developed through previous infections. However, according to the WHO, which is a World Health Organization, herd immunity against COVID-19 should be achieved by protecting people through vaccinations and not by exposing them to the pathogen that causes the disease, which causes the disease and may lead to unnecessary cases and eventually deaths. The objective of the vaccination program is to identify the key population at risk for developing COVID-19 infections and to ensure reasonable distribution of safe and effective vaccines within the Dominican population for the prevention of COVID-19 infections. The following here is the national target of the program. So the total population in Dominica right now is 72,193 persons. The eligible population that can receive the vaccine, which includes children 12 and over, are 59,751. Herd immunity target at 80% for us would have to have 47,800 persons vaccinated. So as we said earlier, our number fully vaccinated is 20,464. Our target from September 1st is 24,958. Having said this, with the arrival or the pending arrival of the Pfizer vaccine, which was recently approved by the FDA, which will allow children who are 12 and over and those who have been turning 12 in this coming year will be eligible to receive the vaccine. The National Coordinator for the COVID-19 Vaccination Unit says several programs are in place to sensitize and educate the public on vaccination. We have one and we have started already. We have the elderly vaccination outreach where we actually go into the homes of the elderly within our district and this is within the seven health districts. Um, people can also call to either have their, va their family vaccinated or come to the health center, and if it's not able, we come to you. Again, we also have community outreach incentives, initiatives where we collaborate with social activists and people that are well known within the community, as well as our doctors, our celebrities, and local celebrities. Recently, we had a community outreach where we had a whistle stop done in Petit Souffrier, which was basically a success. We had a number of persons vaccinated with their first and second dose. So look out for us in the coming weeks within your community near you.
Dr. Burnett encouraged the public to continue to adhere to and follow the protocols put in place by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment to contain the spread of COVID-19. We must continue wearing our masks, washing our hands with running water and soap, as well as boosting of one's immune system, namely with our essential vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, folic acid, zinc, vitamin B complex, and also hydration. Not forgetting social and physical distances and avoidance of large crowds and gatherings. The Dominica China Friendship Hospital has launched a new initiative under the theme Lunch and Learn to stimulate conversation about vaccines and vaccine hesitancy at the hospital with a view towards ramping up the rate of vaccination among all categories of staff, in particular nursing staff. Dr. Dexter James is the Chief Executive Officer of the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. A series of lectures are planned with the first to be delivered this week by a Yale University specialist in internal medicine, research and educator, Dr. Ramin Ahmadi. The title of his talk is COVID-19 Pandemic, What Do We Know? Dr. Ahmadi will also speak about vaccines and vaccine hesitancy among healthcare workers. Colleagues, this is a safe space to, for you to interact and express your concerns about vaccines and vaccinations. So feel free to express your view, views Submit your questions ahead of time in the Zoom link. The first in a series of lectures were delivered by Dr. Ramin Ahmadi, a Yale University specialist in internal medicine, researcher and educator. Dr. Ahmadi was speaking on a particular topic which addresses the concerns of breastfeeding mothers who may want to take the vaccines. The studies shows that post-mRNA vaccines in particular, since the question is asking me about Pfizer, the antibodies against COVID will end up in the baby and will protect your baby. It would be almost as if your baby was vaccinated for a short period of time. Do not deprive your baby from that. Dr. Ahmadi assured that it is safe to take the vaccine during pregnancy. We have now learned uh, that um, the mRNA vaccines are completely safe during pregnancy and they are now, they have been given already to uh, 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 several millions of pregnant women in the United States. Now, we not only believe it is safe for them during pregnancy, but we now are recommending it highly. Dr. Ahmadi says the benefits of the vaccine will only be seen when most of the population is fully vaccinated. That is when you see the benefit of the vaccine. The universality and not the efficacy tells you uh, that you can get through that, that problem. So um, the, the, the follow-up of that question was uh, essentially, can you mix them? And the answer to that is, you know, some of my colleagues are going to hate me for telling you this uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't like the chaos of mixing and they like to keep everything straightforward in their, you know, one column. <laughs> but I have to tell you that data on the mix and match, we call those studies mix and match, is very impressive for the mixing. So if you have had Actually, the first one, uh, dose one Pfizer, dose two Moderna, or dose one Moderna, dose two Pfizer, or dose one and two, either one of them, and a dose three, something else, or, or, or mixing and matching of others. And by the way, so the, the immune response is better. And the, 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 the immunity that is developed as a result, just, just to give it to you short and simple, is better even better. Now, the, some of the vaccine makers already knew about this. Because if you look at Sputnik V, or Sputnik V, however you want to, you like to remember the name, uh, there, there, there is a difference in this one compared to the other two dose adenovirus vaccines. Sputnik first dose uses a different adenovirus vehicle than Sputnik second dose. 
And this difference between the two adenovirus four weeks apart, it's sort of a preliminary mixing, isn't it? They're not exactly the same, the doses, of, you know, identical doses. They're different a little bit. And they achieve very easily after second dose above 90% efficacy. And with something that was difficult, for example, for Sinopharm or AstraZeneca to accomplish. So I think there is something to be said about mixing. I think mixing is better. Having said that, the current CDC recommendation for uh, United States is that follow the same. If you have had Pfizer for your booster shot, take Pfizer. If you have had Moderna, take. However, they also now say, if that is not available and you have to mix, it's quite all right. Go ahead and do it. Um, so that's, that's the, essentially the, the, what I can tell you in summary about what we know about mix and match. The next question says, can one take a vaccination during pregnancy? Uh, we have now learned uh, that uh, the mRNA vaccines are completely safe during pregnancy, and they are now, they have been given already to uh, 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 several millions of pregnant women in the United States. Now, we not only believe it is safe for them during pregnancy, but we now are recommending it highly. During the ensuing week, the Dominica China Friendship Hospital hopes to utilize resources such as the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the World Health Organization, WHO, and experts of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and New Health Investment to deliver messages and talks in support of vaccination. As Dominica continues to mourn the loss of former parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Edward Regist, many who have worked with him says he will be dearly missed. Before becoming the parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency in 2019, the late Honorable Regist worked at the Dominica Water and Sewerage Company, Dowasco, for many years as the public relations officer. Honorable Regist died on September 1 at the age of 50. General Manager of the Wasco, Mr. Bernard Etinoff, says he had a good relationship with the late Honorable Regis during his time at the Wasco. Indeed, you know, it was a great relationship having worked with Mr. Regis here at the Wasco, being our public relations officer. Very often we attended sessions together. He arranged meetings throughout Dominica on, on behalf of management. Um, supported us fully in our public relations efforts here at Dowasco. Um, he was a very friendly person, one who supported both staff, customers, management. He was a good person to work with and he will be sadly missed. Mr. Etinov says the news of the passing of the former parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency came as a shock to his staff. I mean, many persons at Dowasco are very, very sad you know, at, at his passing, he was really loved at our school, you know, and he will be missed greatly. He extended condolences to the family and friends of Honorable Regist. It's really a sad moment for all of us. We want to extend our condolences to his family, his friends, well, all of Granby. I believe Dominic has lost uh, a great man, you know, and may he so rest in peace. On Saturday, September 11, the Dominican Labour Party, led by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, held a tribute ceremony to honor the legacy of Honorable Edward Regist. And now your weather update. Weak instability is expected to produce some showers with a chance of thunderstorms, mainly across the extreme northern and southern portions of the Lesser Antilles. A high pressure system is expected to be dominant thereafter. Pockets of moisture are expected to result in periods of cloudiness with brief showers across Dominica during the next 24 hours. A dust plum is expected across the area today. People with respiratory sensitivities should take all precautions to minimize complications. Slight to moderate seas are anticipated during the next 24 hours with waves peaking to 5 feet. 
Meanwhile, a strong tropical wave located in the eastern Atlantic is being monitored and has a high chance of development during the next two to five days. This system is expected to approach the area by early next week. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, as well as on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Octavia Prosper. Thanks for watching and stay safe.